Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. This week we're going to take a step back and go a little bit more down to the basics of DCC, what it is, and some of the fundamental terms that we hear all the time that sometimes we may not know the actual definition of. So let's take a look at the basics of DCC here in a few minutes and we'll get you guys familiar with what's going on behind the scenes. So let's get started. Now guys, I know that DCC can be a world of acronyms and, and letters and things like that that may or may not make direct sense to you. And some of the terminology tends to get used differently depending on what you're referring to. And so today what we want to do is kind of cover some of those terms and how they're actually used properly so that that way when we're communicating with our service department or even with other modelers, we can all make sure we're using the same words to mean the same thing. So first off, DCC, of course, what is DCC? DCC stands for Digital Command Control. And Digital Command Control is a digital way to communicate directly to your locomotives to control them. Um, and one of the things that's really confusing or at least misunderstood is what the DCC protocol is. And it's a command response based system. So the DCC system sends out a command to the decoders in general, in aggregate, and then the decoder that has the address that is the command that's intended to will then respond to the command. So our DCC command basically has four parts. The first part is, hey, is basically a preamble. It's kind of a, hey, everybody, listen up. We have a new command coming. At this point, all of the decoders start listening because they know a new command is coming. The second part is the address. So, hey everybody listen up, address 1000. And at that point, the decoder that is set to address 1000 continues listening. Every other decoder that is not set to address 1000 goes back to doing whatever they were doing because they know that command is not intended for them. The third part is the command or the instruction. And so we have, hey everybody listen up, locomotive 1000, move forward, speed step 10, turn on F0, turn on F1. And that's the command that we tell the decoder to do. And then the last is what's called the error byte, or it's basically an end of transmission signal. And so we have a, our DCC command basically is, hey everybody listen up, locomotive 1000, do XYZ, end of transmission. And when that decoder 1000 receives all four parts of that command, it then performs the task as told. And this is where your setup or your formulation of your decoder is really going to become critical because that's going to tell the decoder how to behave. Now as we look at our command, we see move forward speed step 10. Well that's a fairly straightforward command. But function 0, turn on function 0, what does that do? Well, by default, the decoder turns on its headlight, but we have to tell it to do that. And so by using CVs or configuration variables, this is how we adjust the performance of the decoder and we tell it how to behave. So by default, the configuration variables tell the decoder to turn on the headlight when the F0 command is done. But then it looks at a different set of CVs and says, how do I display that light? In other words, what a light pattern do I display when that light is on? And then it looks through all of this and then when it understands what it's supposed to do, it then performs the task. This is the same for sound effects. So F1 is typically turn on the bell. So once we've told the decoder to turn on the bell, then it looks at the recordings and it says, which bell recording do I play? And again, that's a CV selection. Now the CV selection that says, okay, I'm supposed to play this bell. Then it says, at what volume do I want to play the bell? And then those are, the def those are the way the CVs work. And so when the decoder gets that information, it then performs the task as being told. So as you can see, configuration variables allow you to vary or to change the configuration or the setup of the decoder. So that way you can tell the decoder how to behave under certain conditions. Now the next part is one that's really important. When we're talking to people over the phone or an email, we use the term programming track. And a lot of times what we want to do is we want to set our locomotives on a dedicated programming track because it gives us a controlled environment that we can actually communicate with the decoder to find out certain settings. So when you're on the main line or your operating track, 
All of those commands are, as I just described, command only. There is no feedback from the decoder, and the DCC system has no idea nor cares whether the decoder ever got or received or responded to the command. It's simply broadcast out. But on our programming track, most DCC systems have a dedicated set of programming track outputs that allow you to talk to the decoder and get response from the decoder to be able to read CVs. Now on the programming track, we can also set CVs without needing to know a decoder's address. So like we talked about on the main line or your operating track, hey everybody listen up, Local 1000, do XYZ and a transmission. When we're on our programming track, the command loses the address portion. Hey everybody listen up, do XYZ, or in this case set CV this to this, and a transmission, and the decoder will respond. Now the reason we can read a CV on the programming track is because in this dedicated isolated programming track, the decoder actually re reads differently than what you would expect. And we can see changes in current because we have a controlled small environment. So a decoder is read by playing a game of 256 questions, starting with, is the CV value zero? When the decoder answers no, nothing happens. So the system moves on to the next question. Hey, decoder, is the CV value 255? No. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? And so on. And when the decoder finally answers yes to the question, the Tsunami 2 and Ekonami will actually internally draw current. Prior generation tsunamis and other brand decoders will draw that current by turning on the motor for a brief instant. And that's where you get that little jerk that you notice when you're programming CVs. But when we did this with the Ekonami and the Tsunami 2, we took that out of the motor circuit because of programs like JMRI where you can read all the CVs and your locomotive would slowly work its way down the track and sometimes off the end of your programming track. But anyway, when we're talking about this programming track, our system now can detect that change in current that indicates a yes answer from my decoder. And so therefore, now the DCC system can say CV29 equals four or whatever it ends up being because we're able to read that CV on the programming track. You cannot read a program, you cannot read a CV on the main line because if it's relying on current change, then if somebody on the other side of the layout, let's say Norman starts running his locomotive on the layout while I'm trying to read a CV, the DCC system has no idea where that change in current came from. And so that's why we need the dedicated programming track. Now, a lot of you guys will have a programming track that you call your programming track, but it's actually your test track. And this is where you test settings and you set up your locomotives before you take them to your operating mainline. And that's fine, just call it your test track, not your programming track. So with that, you can see some of these terminologies and things like that can become confusing. Um, we'll get into another uh, Back to Basics episode a little bit later, talking about the structure of a CV and how to do that. But what I will do in the short term is send you to recommend to look at our webinar series. Now on our YouTube channel, we have a whole bunch of webinars. There's actually 14 different videos that cover topics such as operation of a steam locomotive, operation of a diesel locomotive, and what the sounds you're hearing, of course. But then there's also one such as a more in-depth de explanation of what is DCC? What is the science of sound? We teach you how to solder. We teach you how to do a decoder installation. And Webinar 9 even teaches you how to use the three major DCC systems that are used here in the United States. So there's a lot of great information. I'm going to encourage you guys to go check that out. And if you have any questions or get stuck, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Soundtracks or email us at support at soundtracks.com. Now the last thing, if you like this content, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to make sure that you get notifications and updates on when we release new videos every week covering important topics like this. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.